It's good to have options. And most of us would agree that having options to choose from is, is an important thing, and it's, of course, healthy. But it's also, I think you would agree with me, good to not have too many options, because then, why, then it just gets really, really complicated, and it takes much more time to decide which of the options might be best for us. So our readings today actually make it pretty simple. Simple, but not easy. We're given two options, and the options are these. To leave or to stay. Those are the two options that are set before us in our scripture readings. In today's first reading, why we are told that we need to make a decision, as the Israelites were. You need to choose between the God of our ancestors, or you need to choose between the God of the Amorites, with whom the land that we now find ourselves in. But as for me and my household, Joshua says, we shall serve the Lord. And then in the gospel today, after these very difficult readings uh, that we've had over the last several weeks, and of course Jesus trying to explain to the disciples and the crowd that he is this bread that has come down from heaven and that we need to eat his flesh and drink his blood. Why, of course, as he keeps speaking, there is more and more people that become increasingly more troubled by it. And so there, why today we find ourselves, they're at a point where they need to make a choice. Do they stay with our Lord? Or do they leave him? It's an important choice. And so as the disciples begin to disperse, and we are told by John in today's gospel that many of them chose to go back to their former way of life. And they no longer accompanied our Lord. Many of them just simply found his sayings his teachings, his way of life to be too much for them. And then there's that moment, the moment in which our Lord asks the twelve, are you going to leave me too? And Peter says, to whom shall we go? Notice what Peter does not say. Peter does not say, to where shall we go? For Peter, it's not about a place. For Peter, it's about a relationship. It's about a relationship that he has become to discover is really incredibly important in his life. And so for Peter, his response is not, well, where where do you think we should go? But no, it's, Well, to whom shall we go? Why, you, Lord, you have the words. You have everything we need. And so you and I today, why, we we grab a hold of those coattails of the excitement and the fact that Peter, at least this time, got it right. That it's about a relationship, it's not about a place. And I would invite us, my friend, to realize that, that it's always about a relationship. It's not even about an institution. As we struggle once again as a church with the clergy sexual abuse that is in our headlines and on the news every single day this week and probably will be for weeks to come, we we can get caught up in the frenzy of it all. And in it, we have to ask ourselves, and we have to answer the question, Do we stay or do we leave? And in order to answer that, I would invite you and I to take the stance of Peter and to remember that it's about a relationship much more than it is about a church. As important as our church is, it is a vehicle of God's grace and it is a human vehicle. A human vehicle that is flawed, a human vehicle that oftentimes is sinful, a human vehicle that struggles just as you and I do each and every day 
to be able to choose Christ. And so we gather and we wonder and we are confused and we are angry and we are upset and we are wondering, will it ever, will it ever change? And we need to pray for conversion and we need to pray for change and we need to pray for the victims who continually, who continually suffer at the hands of what seems to be a, uh, in an institution and a hierarchy that just doesn't seem to understand or to even want to hear. But the truth is, the truth is it's about a relationship. It's about choosing Christ. And I would afford you and I that the more intriguing part of the gospel today is to, is to ask the question, what enabled Peter to stay? What enabled those 12 disciples to stay, even in the midst of the difficulties of Jesus' words and his ministry and his teaching, even though there were people that were choosing to leave? What made Peter and the disciples choose to stay? And the answer is at the very end of the gospel. Peter's answer, we have come to believe and to know that you are the Holy One of God. So it's a process. Peter tells us in his answer that in choosing Christ as we need to choose each and every day, it's a process that begins with believing. Believing is, is to be able to trust enough so that we can move to knowing, which is understanding enough. And that still won't be the end for Peter, because we know how that story ends. He's going to be confronted with another question at the end of this same gospel that we've been hearing from over these past several weeks. Peter's going to be confronted with a question from our Lord, if you remember at the end of John's gospel, as they're standing on the shore after the resurrection of Jesus, and he's there with Peter once again, and he's fed them once again, and then he will say to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he, won't, he will ask that question not once, not twice, but three times. So it's a process. We need to move from believing to knowing to loving enough. And that is the key that enables you and I to stay like Peter and the other disciples did. As I thought about what kind of an image have I experienced that helps to illustrate that process of believing and knowing and loving why the image came to my mind earlier this summer of the dad in my neighborhood who was teaching his daughter how to ride a bike without training wheels. It was wonderful to watch. And I watched it from inside of my house because I didn't want to frighten the girl thinking that people were watching her. But there was dad. He took the training wheels off her bike. He was convinced that his daughter was going to ride a bike without the aid of additional wheels. So he took the training wheels off and why he was, you could tell, reassuring his daughter that it was going to be okay. In other words, what he was inviting her to do was to trust him enough. Trust me enough that even if you fall, I'm going to be there to help you and I'm going to be there to pick you up and I'm going to be there to kiss the owie. And once he got his daughter to trust enough, by then she was pedaling like crazy. And dad was running alongside of her as fast as he possibly could because why the street was going downhill. <laughs> and dad kept running alongside the child's bike and you could tell that he was encouraging her and shouting words of encouragement. And of course, there were a couple of times where she did fall. And what did dad do? Well, dad was right there and he picked her up and he got her back on the bike until she finally moved from trust to understanding understanding that, well, that she could do this even without dad's help and encouragement. And then recognizing that she could trust him and she could understand that this was possible, why then she could move to this stage, this process of loving. Loving her dad enough to recognize that, why? Dad, thanks for the assistance and the help, but now there was this new freedom. Freedom to get on her own bike. Freedom to bike around the neighborhood, which she's still doing to this very day. 
with great joy and glee, without the assistance of a dad cheering her on. It's a process, just like that little girl, that you and I need to go through each and every day. And it just doesn't happen once. We need to choose Christ every single day. But it means we have to trust our Lord enough to trust him that he has the words and he has everything that we need to be able to know life to its fullest. And once we trust, we grow in our understanding of who Christ is and how he's present in our life through the gift of family and community and church. And once we come to understand, why then what follows is love. Because Christ is the bread from heaven. Christ is eternal life. Christ is the relationship that we choose, a relationship that enables us to have the strength to say yes. Yes, Lord, to whom else should we go? You, you have the words of eternal life.